We left France a year ago to go on a vast tour of the world in search of the water people. And to do this, we resuscitated La Boudeuse. A year-long voyage that brought us from the Atlantic to the archipelagos of the South Seas, the rivers of the Amazon and Pentecost Island. And our expedition will last another two years. In July 2005, we set a course for a country composed of a cluster of islands, Vanuatu, and more precisely, Pentecost Island, discovered a long time ago by Bougainville on his frigate, also called La Boudeuse. That is where our three-masted ship is taking us today, to one of the last places in the Melanesian Pacific where traditional micro-societies still exist. Several more weeks sailing on an endless ocean. Pentecost Island appears swathed in the morning mist and clouds. It is 60 kilometers long, barely 10 kilometers wide, has approximately 15,000 inhabitants and not much else. This is where one of the most surprising episodes in our long journey is about to unfold. Our objective for this new expedition is the small village of Ratap, lost between the jungle and the mountains. The inhabitants of the village are the Saar, the village has fewer than 60 inhabitants, extremely intent on preserving their ancestral way of life. However, modernity surrounds them. To the south, a mission is patiently attempting to convert them like the other few hundred Saar who live in the south of Pentecost Island. But the Saar of Ratap aren't drawn to the church. To the north, an airfield opens the island to the outside world of which they are mistrustful and from which they take only what suits them. However, aircraft rarely land here, and the airfield is deserted most of the time. Lastly, there are several villages along the coast that long ago adopted a vague form of modernity. The missionaries forbid the people from living naked. In these villages, there are a few stores that sell staple products, straw huts that serve as makeshift bars, and here and there are a few huts for tourists who occasionally visit the island, but which are empty most of the time. After many contacts with the mountain Saar and several reconnaissance trips inland, the expedition team leaves La Boudeuse one morning in September. Six of us join the team, the ship being left under the supervision of the rest of the crew. Pentecost Island is so narrow that to reach the center, a day's walk is enough. On condition, you don't allow the many rice paddies, rivers, ravines, and rocky escarpments that form the island landscape to slow you down. Like the other nine Saar villages on the island, Ratap is placed under the protection of a totemic animal, a boa, which lives near the village. What's special about Ratap is that it was founded by five brothers who are still alive. Wabu, the second eldest. Lala, the acknowledged master of ceremonies. Bon, the youngest of the five. Watas, the eldest, a patriarch respected by all. And lastly, Betu. Each village has a men's house, the Nakamal, the focal point of social life. Ratap's Nakamal measures close to 20 meters long. People meet there to take important decisions, but also to relax. Inside, several fires are burning, each one reserved to a precise class of male. Sa society is organized in 12 classes, each of which requires passing a grade. It is in this Nakamal that we shall live except for Christine, who, like all the women, will be forbidden from entering. This is where the Saar will accept our proposal to share our respective lives. We will live among them, and they will come and live with us on La Boudeuse. Ratap has one Catholic, Watas. From the missionaries, he received the rudiments of a Western education and basic French. 
In spite of this acculturation, his views are representative of what the Saad think and feel today. The two most remarkable women in Ratap are Wano, Lala's daughter-in-law, and Wiang, Betu's wife. Every morning, they accompany old Wamu to the spring that runs at the foot of the village. Come <laughs> now. Shortly after our arrival, Lala decides to build a new hut for her family. Our experience of sharing our lives starts in earnest. In spite of being isolated in the mountains, the Saar trade with the coastal populations. Trading is often done on unequal terms, leading to them making canoes for the coastal population, which enables them to procure only the most basic goods from the outside world. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
So that the Saar can begin to learn something about us, a few coconuts well employed by Vincent may be enough. As everywhere in the Western Pacific, the social life of the Saar is conditioned by kava. Kava is a traditional drink made from water and the root of the pepper plant. It is drunk every evening in the big nakama. <laughs> Kava is prepared according to a time-honored recipe. After being ground, the roots of the pepper plant are soaked in water, pressed and filtered through bark cloth. One can easily get drunk on kava, the earthy flavor of which lingers a long time. But without kava, a saa would not be a saa. <laughs> In the austere mountains of Pentecost Island, nature yields few comforts. People must be content with little, like the children who find delicacies in a clump of ordinary reeds. Coming to live aboard Labudas will be a real event for the Saar. For the first time, we see them wearing clothes. On the coast, no one transgresses the rules of the missionaries. But far from prying eyes, the Saar resort to their old habits. And it is their turn to discover our world. Do you know what this is? This maquette? This is the maquette of the boat that we had before, which was called also the Boudeuse. We had a lot of voyages in Asia, in the Pacific, and then we lost the Mediterranean. There was a naufrage. And before this boat, now we lived on this one, which was very different. It's our Macanel. Oh, that's what we're doing. We're doing it. As in Rattan, the sharing of our respective lives is pursued even in work. Serge Lombardi, our bosun, has no trouble in finding helping hands to make the protective covers of the sails. But what arouses the greatest curiosity among the Saar is the ship's engine room. Mm -hmm. 
One evening, we show the Sauer film shot on their island several years ago, in which the men throw themselves off a wooden tower held by Liana tied to their ankles. It is the Ngol land diving ritual, an impressive show of courage which takes place every spring and brings tourists flocking who pay the Sauer to be able to attend. <laughs> Some of the Saar find the succession of jumps monotonous. Others remember every detail, like Mel Sul. Yes, time we you cost a blown angle. Time we read the blood jump. You fry blood jump, eh? I mean, something where you must jump from, say, me custom blow. Among the Saar, as in all Melanesian societies, the domestic pig is the main source of wealth and exchange. Not all pigs are worth the same. The most coveted are those whose curved teeth can be used as currency or ornaments. As the days go by, Christine compiles a lexicon of the Saar language. Wano, who never leaves her side, is her main source of information. The taro and the yam are the staple foods of the groups of people who, like the Saar, continue to live in the mountains of Pentecost Island. The taro is cultivated around the villages on the slopes of the mountains with constant care. For each plant picked, another one is replanted. The obsession here is to ensure food security, to avoid famine. The island offers little game, and the sea is far away and frightening. <laughs> Nothing seems more natural than the Sars way of life, and like all natural ways of life, it is the same day after day, with no major changes. Life follows its routine. No one can do anything about it. People's problems are the same wherever you are, as in the case of Bibi, Betu's son. <laughs> From say, you know, 
Katumasa Nava Ting Ting Blo Blo make him say life long your life me emic. Especially you like Kata Tumas Nava Ting Ting by life long your life me emic. Sudah kau lom, ramai ramai. Hahaha. Malu kau. Sudah kau lom. Sudah For the Savra tap, any excuse is good enough to nurture the spirit of the land dive or to prepare for the future trial, as these children are doing. When observing the Sao miming their ritual of bravery, one can't help thinking that behind the appearances of the dive, there is an attempt at defying death. Isn't diving in defiance of gravity a way of saying death needn't be feared? And if one is capable of diving, one is capable of defying death. As we do routinely, we dive to clean the hull. An opportunity for the Saar to discover another side of the sea and of us. In their eyes, something rather astonishing, it seems. The books in our library also seem to fascinate the Saar, still divided between mistrust of and curiosity for our world. Each day we catch them leafing through our many books. 
but what they are looking for isn't quite what we expect. Two women with us. Huh? I <laughs> 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 I think one and two, yeah. I'm tell them two. Why me make them law, or some law, side law, control them all people now? Do you think no more, or some law? Or some way, what the human saying thing for me, or some one day, me make them. Today, Watari, the man who loves women, resumes picking kava roots. So far, his wife forbade him to do so because of his previous infidelity. Since to sell the kava, he must go to the coast where there are many women. But Wataru has promised to behave from now on. Okay. <laughs> On the coast, the kava merchants are waiting for the mountain men. Thanks to the Saar, they make significant profits. But Watari is pleased. He's going to make a little money, enough to buy a few manufactured products that the Saar, in spite of what they say, can no longer do without. Trois cochons. Ah. Un gros. Bah, et très, un voilà. Petit. Ah. Them, uh, two ah. small ones, but one big one. If I buy pigs from these peasants on the coast, it is because I have decided to become closer to the community of Ratap by taking one of the 12 grades in the life of the Saar. For each grade, pigs must be sacrificed. And the higher the grade, the more pigs are needed. In Ratap, the villagers are preparing for the grade-taking ceremony called Teo, an intermediary grade which enables you to eat at the central fire of the Nakamal and to bear a new name. Everything starts with the sacrifice of a cock, which gives the initiate the permanent right to reside in the Sa Nakamal and the corresponding title of Tokolmal. <laughs> Yeah, I'm The ceremony continues in the morning. This time I will have to slaughter two pigs. <laughs> Oh, 
Through the network of family relations, I find myself under obligation to a host of brothers and sisters and to five elder brothers, the founders of Ratap. It probably isn't a coincidence. In Wano's hut, the women are patiently waiting for the end of the ceremony. Meanwhile, in the Nakamal, the Kava ritual has begun, conducted by Watas, the patriarch of Ratap. The next day at dawn, a period of retreat begins for me, during which I am forbidden to leave the Nakamal. This will last three days. <laughs> I just have to be patient, like the women outside who are still not allowed to approach the house of the men. <laughs> At the other end of the Nakamal, far from the sacred fire reserved for the highest grades, the young men of Ratap while away the time by making new arrows for their bows. <laughs> <laughs> the three days are over now. The ceremony ends with a symbolic bath alone intended to purify me for the future. Normal life resumes, and we finish building Lala's hut. It took less than three weeks to finish the job. Thank <laughs> you.
Ya. 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 Life follows its peaceful routine in Ratap. People talk of this and that in the village square, people hunt, cultivate their taro patches, and Watari, the man too fond of women, sculpts. <laughs> The time has come for us to honor the promise we made to the Sao when we arrived, to take them on Labudeurs all around their island, a journey none of them have ever made. The first thing to do is to familiarize them with the masts and rigging. <laughs> <laughs> then they need to learn how to haul in the sheets. Good? No. 
this one here. This one? Yeah. At last, it's the great departure for a complete tour of Pentecost Island. The Saar discover their island as they have never seen it before. Soon, Labudeurs and the Saar will go their separate ways. That's how life is. But before, a last secret is told to us about the dreams of the Saar of Ratap. The simple dreams of men who have never possessed anything. I think Mibra want them want something where also Mibra want them money where all the rich come sudden. Long Mibra, long Rata. I think when by Mibra, I think one can have no vida or any other more. Three blow Mibra, go to me. From where side blow right now, he control them every something blow. Something in my life could blow. You for them all record them. Now all something in my life for them. But suppose he Mibra like no go to my life me. By you know, like, try something, by something, by you know, life too much. The last day has come. It is our turn to initiate the sound to the strange rituals of La Boudeuse. On lui donne ça, et pour montrer qu'il était un marin, il doit boire un verre d'eau de mer. C'est la cérémonie. On veut lui dire, t'as envie de dire, on vient de nous attacher. Il a l'attaché. Le premier à être certifié et embarqué à bord de la boudeuse, ce sera Bétou. Voilà, pour Bétou. Et voilà. Il faut boire le verre d'eau. Oui. Bravo. Si vous voulez que vous voulez que vous voulez que vous voulez que vous Free and naked as we met them, the Saar now go back to their life. Like us, they will no doubt remember this experience we shared, an experience between two groups of human beings separated by their differences, but who were brought together by what they shared. As for La Boudeuse, once again she takes us on a journey to meet other people at the other end of the world and to experience new adventures. <laughs> 